Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Mani Love. I hope you guys are all staying healthy and safe during this horrible time of the world. Um, this video is going to be about what they don't tell you about losing a loved one. Okay, so I'm going to have a couple of things I want to talk to you guys about in this topic because this is something I went through and you know, maybe you guys can learn something. So God forbid this ever happens to you, but eventually it will because nobody lives forever. So this is something so that you can, you know, learn and hopefully use, utilize in the future. And, you know, I hope that future, that this thing does not happen to you in a very long time because nobody wants to lose a loved one. So here's number one. In the beginning... Everyone is around you and surrounds you with their love and, and attention and they're supporting you in the beginning. Say like shortly after the passing, you're getting lots of messages, lots of support from everybody. It's like really, really lovely and wonderful. And you have all this attention on you. And But the thing is, you're not really processing it because it's, it's so early on and you're not really processing the, what actually just transpired. What transpired meaning your loved one passed away. So they, uh, all that attention is kind of like a distraction and that attention doesn't last forever. You know, that attention is pretty short lived, like eventually people are going to move on with their lives or whatever the next big thing is, you know? So eventually you're not, your grief is not that important anymore. I hate to say, you know? So, uh, when that happens, when everybody moves on, it's very lonely and you're really dealing with all this, you know, tragedy all by yourself. So that gets really lonely. And that's when the reality hits like, wow, oh my gosh, this person is not in my life anymore. They're really gone. You know, it's like all that, that major part of your life is just sucked out of your day to day life completely. Like they're, they're completely gone. You will never see that person again until you pass on and that is really the hardest part. And like, you want to call this person up and tell them like what John did at the store. <laughs> and that is not, that's, you can't do that, you know? Um, but yeah. And also I want to talk about how important it is during that time when Everybody is out of, like, kind of moves on with their lives. It's important for you to take that time to really make sure you're taking care of yourself. Because if you don't, you can fall into a deep, deep, dark depression. Because I know some people can never move on after losing a loved one. They really just are, like, floating in through life. Like, and it's horrible. You got You have to move on. Nobody is supposed to last forever. You know, our time here is always just temporary. Temporary may mean something to everybody, something different for everyone, but it is only temporary. Nobody here lives forever. Besides those weird jellyfish. There's jellyfish that live, that literally can, are immortal. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, what I did to take care of myself during the time I already talked about in my first video, the testimony, but I'll briefly go through it again. I, you know, exercised. I, you know, um, spent time with friends. I, even though I wasn't talking about my mom's passing every day, but I consistently did that. I also trying to find ways to honor her. Like I played, uh, I had made a playlist for my mom's funeral. I listened to that playlist a lot. It's basically a lot of gospel in Boyz and Men and Mariah Carey. 
And I listened to that while I was working out. And I kind of eventually moved on. I don't know. It, that was just my way. It was very weird. But I that was my way. And it helped me. Um... You may also have very bizarre nightmares. I will talk about my nightmare because it is just too, like, traumatic to, <laughs> to talk about. Because I don't really remember my dreams. And I remember this vividly. And it was awful. It was scary. I think it was what led me to have these night this repeated nightmare, actually, is because I saw my mother's body we've like um for the funeral before the funeral to make sure like to check over and make sure everything everything was up to par and i saw her alone and my husband advised me not to do it to not see her but i didn't listen i felt like i could take it i was able to take it and i was not able to take it it was scary and i of course you know Miss Stoic Imani, I'm like, oh yeah, she's, everything's great, yeah, yeah. And then I went to bed and had horrible, not horrible nightmares. And I had that nightmare repeatedly for a couple nights, actually. Mm -mm. Uh, well, another thing is you may also have spiritual experiences. I had a spiritual experience. This is a very pleasant one. I um, remember a couple months back, shortly after my mom's passing, I uh, was with a friend and uh, we were dr drinking some wine at the time and um, in the backyard. And um, while we were drinking, we were a little, uh, a little tipsy actually. Um, I looked up into the um I heard a bird I honestly just start flapping real loudly and hop up on a branch on the tree and I looked into that tree and it was a red cardinal and actually fun fact my mother loved birds and a red cardinal especially she always talked about I don't know why she always talked about it but she did and she really like always talked about like, oh, that's a blue jay. That's a red cardinal. Like, she always talked about these birds that we see in the back here. She, like, she always wanted to point it out. Like, oh, that's a hawk. Oh, that's a... Like, but she really did love these red cardinals, especially. I think she loved the color of their... Um, I don't know, their coat, I guess. Like, I could forget what, it, what they call it. But the color, it was very pretty red. Um, and this bird looked right at me. At, as It was, like, hopped up on the, on the uh, branch. It stared right at me, and it was like looking into my soul. I was like, "Wow!" And then, like, it dawned on me, like, I'm like, "Mom, like, is this my mother's doing?" And I stared right back at it, and we just stared at each other for a moment. And I just felt like an overwhelming feeling, like, like warmth and like. Uh, it was definitely like a spiritual moment. I can't really describe it, but it was like something took over me. Not like being possessed, but like just a feeling took over me. And I was like, wow, she's saying goodbye. And then when I realized that, the bird, we broke our, broke our glance at each other and just flew off very fast. I was like, what? And I never had birds stare at me before, so that was uh, that was crazy. And I think my friend may have seen this moment too, but we were she, we were both a little drunk, so I don't think she remembers it that vividly as I do. But yeah, I mean, I like to believe that moment gave me the closure I needed. I didn't really get the closure I needed till much later, but that is also brings me to, to urge you guys to watch my first video in case you're interested in to know more about how I dealt with this. Um, so that brings me to the next topic. Um, the I want to talk about now is inheritance. 
and the importance of having advanced directive slash living will. All right, so inheritance is having a inheritance is like to make people really ugly. Like I know they talk about in movies, and we never really pay attention to it, but it could really make people ugly. And I don't mean physically ugly. It, the ugly inside can show during these times. Like it's really not good at all. Um. Like after, I'm not gonna talk much into detail about this because this is my our, my personal experience and it's very deeply personal. But I just want to talk about how important it is to have a living will and a, and a, like have your affairs in order. Like who is gonna get what, how much, like all this stuff has to be in order. Like it's the responsible thing to do if you have loved ones that you love deeply and you want them to be taken care of after you leave because you can't take your money with you to the grave. It's important to have it all right now because the money can sometimes go to a person that you didn't really desire that much or, you know, care for by default, you know. it It's really a, not a pretty time if you have if you don't have your affairs in order. Yeah, so this has got depressing enough. <laughs> I promise you my next video, I'm going to have a series on marriage, and it will be a lot more joyful than talking about death and dying and and stuff like that. I'm, I'm over it. I, I got what I said what I had to say, and now it's out there. Those videos are out there. So if you're going through this time in your life, I am so sorry. These videos are your, hopefully you can use as a tool to move on because it's okay to move on. God bless you and I hope to see you guys in the next video.